time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Thanks for joining us, folks. Uh, I keep telling you that we want to present facts to you, uh, particularly when it comes to our economy, the government, what's happening, and um, only the facts, folks. And uh, whether they're good or bad, I say sometimes facts are... Uh, are ugly things. My guest today, I have in the studio Congressman Lou Barletta uh, from the, um, uh, the 11th Congressional District. And the reason I'm stuttering is because we have Congressman Mike Kelly from the 3rd Congressional District on the phone. And if you remember, Congressman uh, Barletta and Congressman Kelly were on the show uh, a little while ago. But today, uh, I'd like to uh, bring us up to date on what's going on, uh, factual things, folks, what's happening. I want to read this uh, part of this letter that was uh, a letter to the editor and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. He says, Editor, it's amazing this so-called president's blame game. He repeatedly blames the GOP for their failed policies, both foreign and domestic. Now, after running out of excuses, he has the audacity to blame on his own skin color for poor poll ratings and unpopularity. Personally, I don't give a damn if you're black, white, pink, yellow, or polka dot. Look at the president's track record, including Obamacare, where millions of people lost their health care coverage and forces a health care exchange that creates outrageous increases in premiums and deductibles. He was unwilling to meet repeated requests for additional security protection in Benghazi, where four Americans were murdered by terrorists. This president was informed 15 minutes after the attack began that it was terrorism. However, he elected to conspire with Hillary Clinton and blame it on a video, use Susan Rice as a scapegoat, and report this act of cowardice to the American public. Um, this, first of all, Congressman Barletta, is that a factual statement? No, it's not factual, Sam. Of, uh, you know, of course he's going to blame it on his skin col color because he can't blame it on George Bush any longer. You know, for the first four years of this president's uh, term, he, he has blamed the economy and everything that's gone wrong on on President George Bush. Uh, from there, he's now he's gone on to blaming Congress for for everything that's wrong, and it's on and on. You know, when I was growing up, my father always used to say, "Take responsibility for your actions." Uh, this president's been been in office now over five years. Uh, you know, he, he, six years. He's got to take responsibility for the economy, what it is today, for the fact that nobody respects us around the world. That's not Congress. That's not skin color. That's the fact that there's a lack of leadership uh, coming from the White House. Congressman Kelly, your response to what I just read. Yeah, no, I, and I think that the, what the writer of that letter does, he points out very, very articulately, by the way, this president, this, this administration has driven the gap, widened the gap between people's faith and trust in their government and what they see happening. Uh, the president doesn't work any, any, uh, anything towards closing us together. He cannot be the biggest Republican or the biggest Democrat. He's going to be the biggest American in the room. And I, Lou and I have sat in the floor all the time. We watch this. The opportunities we've had to come together and get America back to work, we send them, we pass them in our House, we send them down to the Senate, they get tabled. Mr. Reed is sitting on, on at least 30 or 40 pieces of legislation to get America back to work. I think whenever you can't get it done, what you do is you just deny that you had any type of responsibility for the lack of growth in our economy. Until we get a robust and dynamic economy, everything else we talk about is just idle chatter. And I know when Lou and I sit there, it is so difficult to watch an America that is waiting to burst forward, waiting to take, take over the world with a global economy that just absolutely makes sense to us. And what's holding us back? Lack of leadership. There's a vacuum of leadership at the top. Unfortunately, when there's a vacuum of leadership at the top, whether it's in our country or whether it's in the world, Somebody else will fill that spot. And right now in the world, it's Mr. Putin from uh, Russia. They are, geopolitically, they are winning the battle and putting us in second place. And now our friends and allies are now starting to wonder, where is the America we have known for several hundred years? Where are those folks that we always relied on? Are they ever going to be here from, again? And the president's answer is always, I drew another red line, and we're going to continue to lead from behind. I have absolutely no idea what that means, and neither does, and neither does the world. That's why we're we're kind of moribund right now, and the next election is the reason that Mr. Reid will not touch 
30-some pieces of legislation to get America back to work, and now the president just punted again the Keystone Pipeline, which makes no sense to anybody except a very small group of his supporters that say, no, we just can't do anything when it comes to energy. We're just going to go back to burning wood and, and, uh, and, and hoping that things will get better for us. It's, it's a hard place to be in. It's a hard thing to watch when the greatest country, the greatest nation the world has ever known, the greatest defender of freedom and liberty ever in the history of the world, sits on the sidelines because he can't get out of its own way. Lewis, your response to what Mike said? I, th I think Mike said it as well as it could be said, Sam. You know, our, our, our friends no longer trust us around the world, and our enemies don't fear us. You can't keep threatening consequences and, and then do nothing. Uh, it's very embarrassing. And at the same time uh, that this is happening, the president is announcing to the world that we're dismantling the greatest military that the world has ever known. Uh, and, and, you know, the, the, the greatest threat to our national security is the fact that uh, our debt, our national debt, uh, you know, does not enable us to, again, to, to make sure our sons and daughters that, that defend uh, the freedoms of this, uh, of this great country have everything that they need. And, and uh, you know, and, and I really believe that not only Putin, uh, whether it's Syria, Iran, uh, Al-Qaeda, they're seeing an opportunity where they have two years of this presidency where they can really uh, take advantage. I'm staying on the economy and how things affect the economy because people out there, when it affects their pocketbook and they can't survive and it's difficult, that's when people start understanding something's wrong here. But um, Congressman Stephen Lynch, who is a Democrat, said yesterday, uh, about Obamacare, and I think he, he voted against Obamacare, one of the few Democrats. Uh, the worst is yet to come, and it's going to hit the fan. This is what Congressman Lynch said yesterday. There was a whole article of the Drudge Report. Now, here's the point. He says, repeal is now impossible because of the number of people who have signed up. Mike, how do you respond to that? Do you know what? Uh, and, you know, we've, we've talked about this so many times, Sam. Uh, look, we have something called the American Health Care Reform Act. Now, these are two pieces of legislation, actually, one by Dr. Rowe out of Tennessee, the other by Dr. Price out of, out of Georgia. These are members of our caucus, uh, our conference, rather, that have a strong, strong feeling, and they're part of the doctor's caucus. They have things that will absolutely address health care the way we want to see it. See, I, I look at this. These are two different pieces. The president's plan is about access to health insurance. The doctor's plan is about access to health care, meaningful health care that helps the most vulnerable in our society, and by the same and in the same measure, make sure that this this model is going to be there in the future. I agree with Steve Lynch, by the way. You know, what the delays and the way the president has, I think it's over 30 sometimes now, Louis, uh, the president has delayed or pushed back pieces of this law that would be very damning to the next election. So he's put them back in the back burner so they're out of people's sight. When this full, fully hits, whether it's in the private sector, whether it's in the, the bigger employees, the smaller, uh, the bigger employers, the smaller employers, this is where the effects really start coming on, where people are looking at a health care plan that doesn't offer what they had before, makes them buy things they don't need, and then charges them a lot more for it with deductibles that are off the charts. So this is a common thing that folks are going through. Now, the president's pushed it back a little bit, pushed it back a little bit. What he's doing is is keeping that beyond the next election when the full force of that it will be a tsunami, an economic tsunami in the way of a disaster when it hits our economy after the next election. So I think that while Steve says it can't be repealed, I'd say, my goodness, if you know this is bad, if you know this is going to really hurt the country, and keep in mind of the people that have signed up so far, about 6 million of these people, they're saying 8 million, about 6 million of these people already had health insurance that was they were not able to retain, and they had to go and get a new piece, and then there's 2 million up and uninsured out of the, and I heard the number anywhere from 35 to 40 million uninsured that were out there. So if we were able to get 2 million of those 35 or 40 million uninsured, and we count that as success, that would be the first time in the history of this country that we look at that type of a, a measurement of a lack of, of success and say, oh, this is success. Uh, so, no, I, I believe Steve Lynch is right. I believe, uh, as I believe Lou does, that he is wrong. If he doesn't think that in America, and at this time, with the technology we have, and logistically the way we handle things, if we can't get this tackled and, and bring true health care reform, not the purchase of health insurance, health care reform that takes care of the most vulnerable and by the same token keeps us healthy as a people, 
I think we're wrong. We can do that. If we can't do it here, it can't be done anywhere in the world. You know, when I started the show, uh, Congressman Rollett and Congressman uh, Kelly, I said that we, we want to talk about facts. Where else uh, in, in the country other than having shows like this, okay, I don't know many congressmen or senators uh, who have the information that you guys are talking about have the, the ability to explain this other than a 30-second commercial. Um, for example, you presented a fire, a protection of firefighters bill, okay, uh, with a lot of publicity. First of all, explain to the public what the bill is and then what actually happened to it. We didn't hear that much about it, you know, in the, in the, in the liberal media. Well, there was a risk, Sam, under the Affordable Care Act or, or Obamacare that volunteer firefighters, uh, because they are considered employees by the IRS for federal tax purposes, may have to provide, they may have to provide health insurance to the volunteer firefighters. Well, we all know, especially here in Pennsylvania, where 96% where of all the fire companies in Pennsylvania are volunteers, and nationally, 84% are uh, volunteer firefighters, that this would shut down firehouses all across the country. Now, now, you know, we cannot threaten our men and women who volunteer their time to protect our communities with, with uh, this kind of legislation. So. Uh, the IRS was, uh, was quiet on, on uh, clarifying uh, whether or not that would be true, so I introduced a bill that would protect volunteer firefighters and emergency uh, EMS, volunteer EMS workers, from the Affordable Care Act. The President has given how many waivers uh, to friends and special interest groups? Uh, so the bill went to the floor. It passed the House 410 to nothing. Not even Nancy Pelosi voted against it. The bill goes over to the Senate, and as Mike had said earlier, Harry Reid, uh, never, uh, never missing an opportunity to play politics, didn't put this one in the drawer because of the support that it had. Instead, he took it and changed the name from protecting volunteer firefighters to extending unemployment compensation benefits and added language that would, which was very controversial, that would extend unemployment compensation benefits and has that bill passed in the Senate, which now will most likely kill the bill. Uh, I doubt very much that it'll come back to the House for a vote. But it's this type of politics. When you're risking to use volunteer firefighters as a pawn to, for political gain, is, is the reason that Congress has such a bad approval rating. It's not that we're not doing our job. As Mike said, we passed almost 40 bills, sent them over to Harry Reid. He won't even bring them up for a vote. We have no way of forcing him uh, to do that. And, and unfortunately, uh, the one thing that I do disagree with, we are going to have to do something, whether it repeal or do something to the Affordable Care Act, Sam, it, it, it is going to implode on its own. Well, he said, uh, the, the fact of the matter is, Congressman Lynch said that it, it, it's certain in his mind that they're going to lose, um, they're going to lose a lot of uh, votes because of it, because the people are now, get, as, despite the fact that the liberal media keeps on telling them everything is great, okay, people are losing their jobs, people can't get insurance, people are having problems, people can't pay their bills. People can't trust what the president's telling them. Well, if you like your health care, he said you can keep it. If you like your doctor, you can keep it. Now so they're, he lied. They're, they're, bra they're bragging that 8 million people have signed up. Well, that's like shopping on the internet and putting something in your cart. That yeah. doesn't mean you went to the cash register and bought it. Yeah. But he didn't talk about the over 5 million people who lost their health insurance. You made a statement, and just quickly, and then I want to go to break. Um, you made a statement, Congress Bar Barletta, which I quoted on my show. You said that if, the, if this year, in November, if the Democrats take control and Pelosi has power, what's going to happen? Well, just imagine now if, if, if what, what would happen. Nancy Pelosi will become the speaker again. Uh, the president will control both the House, the Senate, and the White House. So what you'll see is extreme gun control legislation. You'll see the elimination of the Bush tax cuts. You'll see the extinction of the coal industry totally, or, or EPA. Well, he's trying to kill that now. And, 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 and we'll go back into, you know, enormous um, uh, stimulus spending again, w which will bankrupt this country. We have been the only line of defense between this president and, and a Congress that is willing to give him the keys, the checkbook, everything. and everything he wants. Mike, a quick response from you. Well, I would just say this, Lou's absolutely right. Think about this, uh, Sam, and, and to our, and our, our viewers. This president, in his first two years, had an unbelievable run of the board. All of these things that we're talking about today, 
that are, that are essential for the country to, to, to rebuild itself could have been done in his first two years. He did not need one Republican on any one piece of legislation in those first two years. And if his greatest accomplishment in those first two years was to shove Obamacare down the throats of the people, I say, my goodness, you could have done tax reform, you could have done immigration reform, you could have done energy reform, you could have done a myriad of things in those first two years. If you really wanted to be the leader of the greatest nation the world has ever known, you could have done that. What he did was turn to his ideology, pushed it through, and now since then he's been complaining that Republicans are holding him up. No, sir. No. We have done everything in our power the last three years, and we will continue to push forward an agenda that benefits America and not just a political party. My God, we have lost so much time, Sam. We have lost so much progress. We have lost so much profit. We have lost so much ability to get our people back into having faith and confidence in their government, all because of an ideologue that sits in the White House right now. Folks, I'm talking to Congressman uh, Lou Barletta from the 11th Congressional District, U.S. Congressional District, and Congressman Mike Kelly from the 3rd Congressional District. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the Sam Lasan Show. Folks, remember 24-7, you can watch all of our shows, ssptv.com, and my email is sam at ssptv.com. Uh, in the studio today, Congressman Lou Barletta from the 11th Congressional, U.S. Congressional District, and on the phone, uh, uh, Congressman Mike Kelly from the 3rd U.S. Congressional District. Entitlement programs that we have in the country today, and people see it all over the, all over the United States. Um, uh, where are we heading with our entitlement programs? Well, there, that's, that's the auto spending, Sam. That's where, where Congress has no control over it. It's, it's Medicare, Social Security, and interest on our debt. If you take those, uh, the, those programs, our entitlement programs, and the interest on in our debt, it, it consumes about two-thirds of our total uh, revenue that, that is given to the federal government. If we don't do something about the interest in our debt and, and reforms to the entitlement programs, by 2030, every dollar sent to the federal government will go to, will go to entitlement spending. There won't be anything for defense. There won't be anything for medical research. There won't be a dollar for, for highways, for any program you can imagine. Uh, this is auto spending that is like a Pac-Man just totally consuming every dollar that the, that the American people are sending to Washington. And there is a, 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 an appetite in Washington for some people that want to spend even more money, to give more money away, uh, doing nothing about the fraud and abuse that's going on, eating up this money. Okay, in, your, in, in our area here in Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania, how does Congressman Marino feel about what you and Congressman Mike Kelly are saying? Well, you know, t uh, Congressman Tom Marino is very close with, with, uh, with Mike and myself, and, and, and we sit together and talk about this every day. Uh, we talk about, you know, how we went there, you know, to protect America for, for our grandchildren and, 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 and everyone's grandchildren, and, and how this next generation really will not be able to, uh, to do anything to correct what's happening right now. So Tom Marino is, is right in line with, with the way that Mike feels, and Mike, I, I think I, I'm speaking correctly about, about Tom's attitude. Yeah, oh yeah, I, I don't think there's any question. I think the one thing, uh, Sam, that when the three of us got together, we first got to Congress, uh, Tommy and Louie knew each other because of the area, and I got to meet them, and, and right away, we became like the three musketeers uh, from from uh, that part of Pennsylvania, you know, the upper half of Pennsylvania. He said, you know what, we're here for one reason, and one reason only, and that's to protect the people who sent us, and to make sure that our children and our grandchildren and all, our, for all the people we represent, children and grandchildren, have a future. We looked at this, and i got to tell you, what you have to be careful of, and, and uh, Louie and I feel the same in talk. We can't let ourselves get frustrated by the lack of progress as to saying, you know what, uh, it can't be done, I'm giving up. You know, well, we yeah. know what's going to happen. Yeah, the other thing is... What, when your frustration turns to anger and it doesn't get answered, then it turns to apathy. We cannot allow ourselves, and this is for our viewers, Sammy, yeah. we cannot allow people to take, it, take a, a view that somehow we can't fix it. Whenever we decide we can't fix it is when it's over. We can fix this, but it's going to take iron, iron wheels. We're going to have to have very strong stomachs and very strong backs to get through the next 10 years or so. This is going to happen overnight. This didn't happen overnight. It's not going to get fixed overnight. We can fix it, but it's going to take strong-willed people. What about Congressman so Cartwright? One purpose, and one purpose only. That's to get this country back on its feet. Uh, Congressman Kelly, I'll start with you. What about Congressman Cartwright, who is, who is also representing the... Um, uh, 17th Congressional District, uh, where is he with the, the, uh, you know, the, the plans to move this country ahead? Uh, you know, I don't get a chance to talk to Congressman Cartwright that much. Uh, he's, uh, I've talked to him a few times, and, uh, but I never, <laughs> when it gets down to the actual debt, I think when you look at his voting record, you look at his philosophy, which he states pretty freely, 
he's uh, he's on the opposite side of what we think. Uh, these are more of the free spenders. Uh, let tomorrow take care of itself. So let's just eat, drink, and be merry. Congressman, so, uh, uh, let me get right the, What's your response, to uh, You know, again, I, I haven't looked at at, at Matt's uh, voting record. Um, I would I would believe that Pelosi has most of the Democrats uh, on that side of the aisle voting as a block. Uh, there are very few Democrats that really uh, venture over on, to the other side. According to um, uh, Dr. Moylan, who is running for U.S. for U.S. U.S. Congress in that seat, um, uh, he brought it up, and so did I think uh, Matt Connolly. But it's con uh, Dr. Moylan brought up the fact, and he brought his voting record, where you know he was uh, voted against the um, you know the energy situation and the uh, a lot of, of things where he voted against um, his record. So uh, the only concern about that, because like you said, it, you know we have to be. The, the, the country today has to be very concerned about what where we're going in the future. Okay, well, you know, Sam, I think it's very important that we do that we work together as a Congress. Yes, uh, and you know, it comes time when you need to put we need to both Democrats and Republicans put our party aside, and and we're working for the American people. So I any time I have an opportunity to to work with with uh, with people on the other side, we're trying to find that common ground. And you know, Matt and I have found when it comes to flood control or issues that you do really need to put your parties aside and, and do what's best for the area and for the people. All right, now, last week, uh, uh, Congressman Kelly and Congressman brought up, uh, on one of the major networks, the news networks, they, they, there was a reporter who said that the Democrat Party today, that there's a war on the American family, uh, that, you know, if you look at their platform, the Democrat platform, it is a, definitely a war on the American family. Give me a minute response to that, Lou. <clears throat> well, there's no question. The middle class is being squeezed right out where there won't be a middle class. Uh, Sam, just take, for example, uh, you know, the 30-hour work week. You know, my father, you know, he was a tough guy. If I told my father I worked 30 hours this week, I'm done. We put that in two days. Yeah, <clears throat> I'd get a good swift kick in the, in, in the rear end. Yeah. But you know what this means? Saying that 30 hours is a work week means that employers will cut the hours of people so that they are exempt from from paying the Affordable Care Act, that means if you're earning $10 an hour and, and in a 40-hour work week, that's $110 a week less you're going to see in your pay. That's over $5,000 a year to people who are living paycheck to paycheck. Now, if anyone thinks that this administration is not squeezing the middle class uh, out, uh, then, then obviously they're not, they're not paying close attention. Mike, give me a minute response to that. Well, I think I think Lou's hit the nail on the head, though. Uh, anytime we reduce the role of the family and the success of an individual and then turn it more towards the government program, uh, an unsustainable government program that's usually temporary at best, then we, we drive down this, this belief that we can get through things as families. Uh, I just think this is a very dangerous path we're on right now. The nuclear family has always been the key. The fact that we are a nation of faith, the fact that we know what works and what doesn't work, and we've always re wanted to be self-reliant. I think that's the key. In America, we want to be self-reliant. That's what our families taught us. It goes way back to my grandmother and grandfather telling me what I had to do as a child. When we go away from those basic things that we know to be true, then we really are in a problem. And this, this is, a, this is a, a party that really wants to keep growing programs to get people away from, break down the family unit, and get the people to going to government for what they need rather than going to each other to be self-reliant. So it's a very dangerous uh, time in our history for the American people. Uh, Lou, uh, very quickly, uh, what should the American public do this year? Well, they've got to pay very close attention. They've got to look at every representative, who they're sending to Washington, Democrat and Republican, regardless of who it is. And, and are they trying to find uh, solutions to the problems? It's easy to, to stand and grandstand, uh, but we have not only said what we don't like, Sam. We said this is how we're going to fix it. This is the solution. And sometimes when you're sick, the medicine doesn't taste so well. Uh, you all know, we all know that. When our kids are sick, you, you, know, you, you do whatever you can. But, but it's, if we don't take the medicine, then you're going to get worse. And, and that's what we need now. People who have the courage to do what needs to be done. Congressman Kelly, one minute. How do we fix it? Hey, I'll tell you what we do. I mean, the Republicans right now, we are truly the party that says we need to grow. Uh, we know we just can't cut our way out of the situation, so we have to grow our economy. We have to be very, very thoughtful about where our debt is right now and how we're going to curtail it. We do it by making sure that we come out to the polls on Election Day, find out who it is that you're electing. There's not one person in any seat in any government, whether it's local, state, federal, that just walked in and sat down. They are elected by people, or more importantly, they are elected by other people 
who don't cast a vote that day because they think their vote doesn't count. I'm, I'm, I am begging everybody I know, get out, get informed, get active, and get to the polls. Take your sons, your daughters, your friends, your neighbors, and everybody else. Um, their future, their stake in America is on Election Day. They have to be out that day, and they have to know what they're doing the day they put that lever, they push that lever or mark that, that ballot. So it's incredibly important to people that this, you may be upset about things, but you know what? You don't get it fixed by sitting at home complaining and carping about it. Get out. Let's make sure we get our country back to where it needs to be. Congressman Kelly, it's always a pleasure talking to you on the Sam LaSanne Show. And when you're in town again, I'd love to have you here on the studio. Um, uh, certainly keep up the good work. Um, Congressman Boletta, you've always been there uh, responding to that. And, and, and I've said to many people, whether you're Democrat or Republican, uh, we have a mess in this country because people do not pay attention to who's in Congress. Um, so I want to thank you for, uh, for coming on the show, Thanks, uh, Congressman Boletta. And Soli, um, uh, Mike, tell your wife we said oh, send our best, okay? I will do that. Thanks, Sam. Uh, you're watching the Sam LaSanne Show. Remember, 24-7, folks, uh, SSPTV.com. Uh, we'll be having a lot more uh, shows like this before November. Critical time. Pay attention to who's running on boat tickets. We'll see you next time.